Hello everyone and welcome to Health Motivation Monday. So today we're going to jump right in. We're going to talk about pre-diabetes. Okay, am I at a high risk? Do I have it? So the thing about this is that you may have pre-diabetes and not even know it because there are no clear signs and symptoms that you would know. The only way that you would know is to do a blood test to confirm where you are. And so um, if you are pre-diabetic, one of the tests that we can do to find out where you are, if you are diabetic, if you are pre-diabetes, or if you are just normal, you have a normal uh, blood sugar. So one of uh, those tests is called a hemoglobin A1C. So if your hemoglobin A1C is less than 5.7, you're normal, normal blood sugar. Okay, if it is uh, from 5.7 to 6.4, you are pre-diabetic. If it's over 6.5, you have diabetes. Okay, so that's just one of the tests that we use to determine where you are. Like I said, there are no clear signs and symptoms. So looking at CDC statistics in 2017, we know diabetic facts, okay? There are 30.3 million people that have diabetes. Okay, out of those, about 23.1 million people are diagnosed. However, there, there's about 7.2 million that, that are not diagnosed. So those are the people that I'm talking to today. That um, because, you know, about 11.6% people who are truly pre-diabetic have been told by their hair care uh, providers that they are. But there are many, many people who just don't know. They have no clue. So today I'm going to talk about some signs and symptoms that puts you at a high risk for being pre-diabetic because we don't want you to move to becoming diabetic. Okay. So if we can catch these things early, we can go on and check it out. So one of the risk factors, weight. So it is a fact the prime one of the primary risk factors for prediabetes is weight, being overweight. So and you want to think about the more fatty tissue that you have around the waistline, it puts you at a higher risk. Okay. So weight is a risk factor. Number two risk factor is your waist size. It kind of has a lot to do with the same thing as weight, but primarily for men with waist larger than 40 inches and for women with waist larger than 35 inches. Now that's not always the case, but this does put you at a higher risk of being pre-diabetic. Okay. Then number three, dietary patterns. What are you eating? Are you eating a lot of sugary drinks, uh, sweetened beverages, just um, things that are non-nutritive sweets? So you want to decrease those things and then have a diet higher in fruits, vegetables, nuts, grain, whole wheat, you know, olive oil, the good oils. Those are the things that are going to lower your risk, decrease your risk factor. So drinking a lot of sweeteners, you know, that puts you at a high risk, okay? Another thing is inactivity, having a sedentary lifestyle, which is not good because the less active you are, you're the greater chance of developing prediabetes and diabetes. So physical activity does help uh, because you know you burn you know the glucose and turns energy. So you want to increase your activity level. So inactivity is a risk factor. Another risk factor is age. As we all get older, as we age, we put us at a higher risk of being prediabetes pre-diabetic so um there's nothing you can do about your age but what happens i think you know as you age you're at, you start to decrease your exercise and you start to gain weight easier you lose muscle mass especially for women so the only thing you can do about that is to increase your activity so so that you can decrease your high risk your risk factors and then family history again there's nothing you can do about family history but just know that that's a high risk uh, a risk factor as well okay your race Another factor uh, that puts you at a risk because there's certain um, ethnicity that that, uh, that there's just a high incidence of uh, diabetes. And these are African Americans, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Asian Americans, and Pacific Islanders who are more likely to develop prediabetes and are moving on to diabetes. So another risk factor, of course, if you're a woman who has polycystic ovarian syndrome, and this is characterized by having irregular menstrual periods, so um, and other signs as well. So that puts you at a higher risk of having uh, prediabetes and diabetic <clears throat> sleep. If your sleep is always interrupted, or if you have a sleep uh, problem going on, so that also puts you at a higher risk because it increases it may increase your insulin resistance. So this is part of the reason why uh, people uh, develop diabetes. Okay, and there's of course this association of diabetes with having high blood pressure, high cholesterol. So you want to ha uh, have a, a higher amount of HDLs, which are your good cholesterols, and a lower amount of your LDLs, which are your bad cholesterols. So if you have 
you know, too much of the bad cholesterol, that puts you at a high risk of being pre-diabetic. Okay, so we want to catch these signs early so that we can prevent or kind of uh, slow down uh, or just if we can prevent going to di diabetes. So that's part of the reason if you have some of these uh, high risk factors, you do want to get it checked out because then we can do some things about it too. Because a lot of these things are lifestyle modifications, things that we can do to help us. So because we want to uh, uh, stop or prevent you moving to diabetes and then prevent complications from diabetes. Some of those complications being, for example, you know, heart disease, stroke, kidney disease, blindness, amputation, you know, renal dialysis, you know, organ damage or failure or even death. So. We all we all are gonna die, but we want to prevent premature death. Okay, so if we can catch these signs early, risk or decrease these risk factors, then we can uh, start moving towards health and wellness. Okay, so having said that, I want to challenge you to go. You know, if you have any of these risk factors, go check it out to your doctor, and so that um, it's going to uh, help to probably save lives. <laughs> so. Um, so if this information was useful to you, you know, feel free to comment below. If you have any questions, uh, let me know, okay? And then just share. If this information was useful to someone else you feel it might be useful for, go ahead and share. Okay, on that note, I will end here. And then, again, I want to invite you to subscribe. And feel free to like and share. Till next time, talk to you later.